Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I am so excited to do. I'm going to be talking about makeup that I am glad I did not declutter. Okay, I saw my friend Kelly Gooch do this video. I will link hers down below. Make sure to go check it out. And the moment that I saw this on my YouTube subscription feed, I was like, I absolutely must do that video. One of my top requested videos that I get in to do is a video on makeup that I regret decluttering. And you've never seen me do that video because I really don't have enough products to talk about. There's not a lot that I've decluttered and I do a lot of declutters. I have a whole declutter series on my channel. A lot of times I just don't have deep regrets when I've gotten rid of something. It's like, okay, like I'm okay with it. But I do have some products that maybe were close. I was thinking about it. They were on the chopping block. I was like, I don't know, should I keep this one? Mm -mm -mm. And I decided to keep them around and now I'm happy about it. So I thought it would be so fun to walk you through just a few products here that maybe were a little bit close of getting removed from my collection, but in the end that I'm glad that I decided to keep them around. I hope that you like this video idea. Again, thank you so much to Kelly for such a fun one. And let's go ahead and get started. I did want to say that I filmed this makeup look. I'm using the Natasha Denona Mini gold it is a newer palette to my collection I have this look over on my instagram which is march beauty word i post a lot of uh tutorials on my makeup looks over there if you want to check that out but to jump into it okay first up one of the first products that i thought of was a foundation this is from ColourPop, and this is their no filter foundation purchased this one i don't want to say that i felt like super low hope that it would work out for me but i've just noticed with ColourPop, a lot of times their complexion products like foundations and concealers don't tend to be a favorite of mine i really like their eyeshadow palettes um even like their blushes their highlights their bronzers that's kind of what i lean to when it comes to ColourPop. But I really wanted to try out this foundation when they released it. I was, you know, a part of the hype of people being like, I absolutely must try that foundation. And when I first got it, I was like, mm, I don't really know if we're going to be best friends. I'm not really sure if we're just going to be more like casual acquaintances. I wasn't really sure what was going to go on. And uh, like, I, I, I mean, I've reviewed it on my channel. I've talked about how I didn't think it was the most long wearing foundation. And for me, I typically like something that's going to be a little bit more long wearing, but I also do like something that has more of a natural finish or maybe sometimes even more of a dewy finish. And sometimes it can be hard to find something that's really long wearing in that category. And with this one, I was just kind of so, so on it. And when I would do my declutters and do my foundation declutters, this was one that I always kind of gave a side eye to like, do I really need to keep you around? A couple of reasons why I decided to keep it around is because it is from ColourPop. Sometimes I do like to do a full face of ColourPop like on my Instagram if I'm using a new uh, like eyeshadow palette with them. I can do a full face of ColourPop. It is also more affordable. A lot of my collection has definitely geared more towards high end recently. Um, those are the brands and the products that I am being more interested in purchasing and trying for myself and keeping for myself are in the high-end category but I definitely do want to keep affordable products in my collection drugstore products in my collection also like I don't want just a high-end makeup collection so that's another reason that I wanted to keep it around but through doing that I've been able to try it out more try it out with different primers try it out with different powders and now I won't say that it's my favorite foundation like it's it's not like a top Top three for my foundations or anything those are all high-end foundations or luxury foundations but I actually like it a lot more than I did when I was first trying it out and I think if I would have just decluttered it right away I wouldn't have realized that if I pair it with a little bit more of a mattifying um, primer that it can last a little bit longer on me if I use more of a loose powder versus a pressed powder and really like kind of pack on the powder on my face it helps the longevity of it you know I, it was just a little ways that i could find the way that this foundation best worked for me and i actually have ended up liking it a lot more than i initially did so i'm actually glad that i kept this one around from ColourPop. next up i have a face palette and this is from hourglass this is the ambient lighting edit volume 4. this baby was on the chopping block on the end of the chopping block let me tell you i put it into a shop my stash bag a few months ago and i sometimes i put products in my shop my stash bag because i'm trying to decide should i keep them is it time to get rid of them and i have this one in here and i was like let me just let me just try it out and see when i first started trying hourglass powders i was like what 
why does everyone talk about these? I, I do not understand. Some of my favorite YouTubers, some of my favorite people on this platform absolutely rave about the Hourglass powders. And when I fir first got my few, I got a blush uh, and I got one of their finishing powders and I was like so enthusiastically throwing them on my face, like make me beautiful. And then I would look in the mirror and I'm like, you still look like regular Samantha. What's happened here? I'm not really sure where that accent came from. Sometimes I switch into different accents. I'm not really sure what that's about. But regardless of that, I just felt like I was missing something. Like I was like, I think something more was supposed to be happening. And I just didn't really understand them. I ended up decluttering uh, my blush and also my, um, my, my finishing powder. I decluttered both of those out of my collection. But when I got this palette, which was gifted to me from a subscriber, which is an incredibly sweet gift, I decided to keep this one around because I have a bronzer in here. There's two blushes in here. Um, and then there is a highlight and two finishing powders, I believe is how this one rolls, yes. And I was like, I'll keep this one around and try it. And I have to say that I'm coming around on these powders more. The bronzer, the bronzer is really beautiful. And the bronzer is more of a glowy bronzer. Like it's not super shimmery, but it's not a full matte bronzer. And I used to be into matte bronzers. I did not want any shimmer. I didn't want any glow. I didn't want any luminosity. I did not want that in my bronzers. And now, I like glowy bronzers. I think that they're really pretty. So I was like, okay, like that could be that could be something there too. But even with the finishing powders, I just didn't understand the concept behind them for such a long time. And now I'm getting it. Now I'm understanding. And maybe it's just because my makeup is changing. My makeup preferences are t are changing. I'm learning more makeup uh, techniques as I go along. I mean, I feel like I learn something new nearly every single day, which is fantastic. And I'm starting to lean into the finishing powders as well so i'm actually really glad that i ended up not decluttering this palette especially because i do have you know so many different categories of makeup in here that i can keep going back to so yeah i've been changing my mind a bit on those hourglass powders a product that i'm glad that i never decluttered and it was close because i was like another product that i was like don't get it don't get why everyone talks so highly about this one and i eventually had to come to uh eat my own words there because it's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finishing Powder. Okay, so when I first used this, I really didn't quite get the hype because I was seeing everybody use this in their tutorials, get ready with me, favorite makeup, all of that. I would always see, as you can note the gigantic pan in here, I would always see this one being mentioned and I was like, all right, like, this is an expensive powder but i was like let's try it out let's see what i think and the first few times i used it i was like i don't know it's just like regular powder like i what i can get this from the drugstore i can buy something so much more affordable i really like the covergirl healthy vitalist powder and i've suggested that one if you don't want to pay this high price tag and i still stand by that i never said that they were exact dupes for one another because i do think that the charlotte powder is a little bit lighter than the CoverGirl, but to me I was like they're doing pretty much the same thing right over time I have come to realize that I like this one a lot and I use it a lot still really like the CoverGirl one uh that one's being discontinued though which is a big bummer I like this one and I think one of the biggest reasons for it is because I've started using powder on a more regular basis I didn't use pressed powder for a very long time. I would do loose setting powder, the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. Oh, that was a favorite of mine. And I would really like go ham with my loose powder. Having this in my collection didn't make sense for me for a while because it was like, I'm not even really using this type of product. Like why, like why spend so much money on something that's just kind of sitting there? And again, over time, and as I just kind of change things up with makeup or decide that I like doing something a certain way, I powder my face now, like I set my foundation with a finishing powder or a setting powder pretty much every single time that I do my makeup. And that was a step I did not do for years. I didn't get it. I thought it was an extra step. I thought it was just more powder. I've always had really dry skin. And especially a few years ago, I had dry, dry, dry skin. So putting more powder on my face, I was like, this just seems absolutely silly to me and that has now changed so now i lean on my charlotte tilbury very often and because i'm not as dry as i used to be and i can start to have oils come through on my forehead and on my chin and like right here on the sides of my nose it's really nice for me to have a powder to touch up with if i am 
out and about if i were to throw a powder in my purse it would always be this one just because it is so lightweight it's so easy to touch up with this one and yeah eventually i had to realize that i liked this one a lot more i do still think that you go through it like i hit pan on this one so fast and i was like what that is shocking to me and for the um the price take on this i was like that seems like kind of baloney but i do appreciate because i hit pan on this i mean well over a year ago if not <laughs> It was a while ago that I have and you can see like I'm still able to get a product around the sides it is still going to last me a long time I kind of had the fear of like once I hit pan it's pretty much over and it's gonna break and it's gonna be horrible but no it's it's still going strong which that made me feel a lot better too so yeah I'm I'm glad that I ended up not getting rid of this one because it's one of my favorite powders now I also wanted to mention my milk makeup baked bronzer so this is their cream bronzer now if you guys I've been around my channel for a while. I'm not the biggest fan of like cream and liquid products, bronzer, blush, highlight. I don't reach for them as often, but every once in a while, I do find a product that I think is really good in that type of category. I like Charlotte Tilbury's um, contour wand, the contour and highlight wand. I like the Ilia Beauty liquid blush that they have. One time I had the Benefit Hula and then I purchased this milk makeup one because so many people spoke so highly of this one. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna give it a try. I'm pretty sure I bought it in a sale because again going back to like that's not a product that I use very often but I'll try it out. And I can remember doing the declutter and having this one and my benefit one and being like should I declutter them both? Should I declutter the milk makeup and keep the benefit? Like what which one should I do? I ended up decluttering the benefit and I don't regret it. I, I really don't. I, I'm okay that I let that one go. It was their Hula Quickie Contour Stick, but I am glad that I decided to keep around the milk makeup and not declutter this one. I am slowly coming around a little bit more when it comes to cream and liquid products. Again, I just feel like I have to find the ones that I really like that really work well for me. I really do like the milk makeup one though. It's so easy to blend out. I also tried the Fenty Beauty Contour Sticks, decluttered those, don't regret it. But especially with that Fenty, I felt like it was so hard to blend out and I was like pulling at my skin. The benefit just was wasn't the best shade match for me and I didn't think it, it was as long wearing as the one from Milk Makeup whereas the shade Baked works really well for me. The wear time on it is really nice. It just makes everything look really natural too which I do appreciate so I'm glad that I ended up not decluttering this one from Milk. The eyeshadow palette that I have in here is from Natasha Denona and this is the Mini Sunset Palette. Okay this palette I will say is is not my favorite. It's not my favorite out of all of my eyeshadow palettes. It's not a favorite out of my Natasha palettes. It's not a favorite out of my mini palettes. If you guys do like the ranking palette videos, I recently did one ranking all of the eyeshadow palettes that I tried in 2020. It's up now on my channel. Last year I did a whole video ranking all of the palettes that I tried throughout the entire 2019, but I do also have a TikTok which is nice for shorter videos and I've been uh, starting a series where I'm ranking the different brands that I have over there. So I've done ColourPop and I've also done Natasha Denona. So if you're interested in that, I'm Samantha March XO on TikTok and you can let me know what brands you'd want to see next and I can definitely do that over there. But for the mini sunset, I did rank that more towards the bottom. I It's not that I like absolutely hate it or anything like that. I just, when I first got it, I wasn't blown away by the quality um like i thought everything was nice but i was like i don't know i'm not really sure i get the hype on the natasha denona palettes because this was one of the first palettes if not the first palette that i tried from natasha i did also grab her mini Leela and i returned that one and i actually had a reaction to that i do have sensitive eyes and sometimes eyeshadows will cause me reactions um eyeshadows can do it mascaras can do it I, I don't know what it is. I haven't quite figured it out. But each time I used the mini Leela, I would get a reaction. So I ended up returning that one. And, you know, I don't regret it for that. But I, that one also kind of scared me off, Natasha Denona, because I was like, maybe something about her formula doesn't work for me. I have since gone on to have a lot more Natasha palettes, and I've never once had another reaction to it which makes me glad. But going back to the mini sunset, I had certain times where I was like, I don't know, should I keep it? Should I get rid of it? One of the reasons that I don't regret decluttering it is, might sound kind of silly, but I like that I have it now for my Natasha collection. So when I do ranking videos or when I talk about new Natasha palettes, 
I can pull this one out and be like, hey, you know, here's a comparison to the mini sunset. I'm also glad that I kept it around because I didn't know at the time that I would go on to have such a love for the Natasha mini palettes. The mini nude is a favorite of mine. And if you saw, I did a video recently creating my own Natasha Denona mini love palette. I really like the midi of the love palette that she has. So I did a video in collaboration with another YouTuber and I created my own mini love palette and that was a lot of fun. And what I was doing was taking shades from my other Natasha Denona palette. So yeah, I pulled out the mini sunset and was like, oh, you know, was there, would there be anything that would work in the palette that I am thinking about? So yeah, I just, I didn't know at the time that I would go on to really enjoy the Natasha Denona brand. You know, obviously we're like, pretty much best friends at this point with our girls nights. I want to say that like I'm a collector of them because I also yeah, yeah I don't want to buy something just to have it like as a part of my collection. I would rather buy something because I genuinely want to try it and I want to see how it works and, and all of those things but I am glad that I have it now for my little Natasha collection and with my minis. I have one more product to mention. It's actually another one from Hourglass and this is the Scattered Light Glitter Eyeshadow and I have the shade Reflect. All right, so this is a single shadow and it's a pretty pricey little guy. And I have said in a lot of my videos that I didn't quite understand the hype on this one. I got this one and the Marc Jacobs, um, oh, what are they called? Like the Marc Jacobs version of a single glitter eyeshadow in Caparazzi. And I've compared the two and I was like, I would much, I would much more recommend the Marc Jacobs. I think it's like a whole dollar cheaper. So you can always hit up a dollar menu, save that dollar. Just was like, ah, I don't know about this one. And when I would do my declutters, my eyes always kind of went to this because I was like, how, I'm just not using it very often. And to me, it just didn't seem like a special product. That's kind of what I kept going back to. To me, it just looked like a very, very pretty, but very just like kind of shimmery foiled eyeshadow that maybe I have in other palettes. I can create using a damp eyeshadow brush. I was like, I just don't really understand it. And I know so many people love it. I've seen, once again, a lot of people that I really enjoy and follow here on YouTube that rave about these. And recently, once again, I put it into my Shop My Stash bag. I had put it into my Shop My Stash because I, I had used it, well, I don't even really remember why I grabbed it out, but I was like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll grab the hourglass and I put it on I was like you know that does look really pretty and then the next time that I was going to pick out my shop my stash products I was like I'm gonna throw in the hourglass and just try to test it really consistently use it as much as I can and see if do I really need to keep it around or do I just think it's not special and I can declutter it and I wore it quite a bit during those two months that I had my shop my stash bag pulled aside and I was like okay what's happening here because I felt like I liked it so much more than I had been I think that this does look really nice over another eyeshadow I think that's what kind of really can make it pop and be a little bit more special versus just using it on its own but each time I would wear this on my eyes I would get so many comments of like what is it that you're wearing it looks like just like a beautiful wet liquid eyeshadow on your eyes what is it and I was like, it's this freaking hourglass. I did not think. So again, I'm like here to eat my words. But I really did not think that I would end up liking this one so much. And also the Marc Jacobs shade that I bought is in Caparazzi. And it's a little bit on like the orangey copper side, I would say. I would say where this one is just kind of like a, a beautiful um like taupey shade. Almost like a, like a hint of like champagne taupe maybe. And it's for kind of my more i don't even want to say like everyday looks but like a shade that i'm reaching for more often is going to be this one so i am really glad that i ended up not decluttering it because i was close several times okay other than that though that is it for some makeup that i almost decluttered but i'm glad that i ended up keeping in my collection let me know if you like this video i'm sure i could do it again with some more products too so if you'd want to see a part two do let me know thank you so much to kelly gooch for such a fun idea again make sure to go check out her channel uh, other than that though if you guys enjoyed it make sure to give this one a thumbs up i hope you also consider subscribing before you go and i will see you in my next video bye